My Nerd World. It is My Nerd World and Depeche Mode, the podcast. I'm your host, John Justice. Had no intention of doing a, another show this weekend. After the disappointment, uh, myself, a lot of fans, I have listener feedback to share on the show today as well. I had no intention of doing a show probably until Thursday next week. Uh, yesterday's countdown finale with the announcement that Ghost Again, the first single off of Memento Mori, will be coming out on the 9th next Thursday, 10 o'clock uh, Central, my time here in uh, in Minnesota. I figured, well, you know what? Just going to start the uh, excitement all over again. Spent the evening uh, taking in Depeche Mode. I went through my 101 box set, actually pulled out my, and I forgot how amazing this the, this is. I pulled out my Sounds of the Universe uh, box set last night as well and was going through it. Rediscovered that album recently, and I really enjoyed the album uh, upon its initial release. But for some reason as of late, um, I really have gravitated towards it. And so I pulled that out last night, enjoyed some Spice Rum, and ended up watching uh, 101 on Blu-ray. Really had a, a wonderful evening. Uh, got up this morning and a little groggy, a little too much spice rum. Got up this morning and uh, hopped online and at Depeche Mode underscore SK. Um, uh, fantastic uh, Depeche Mode uh, website and a Twitter account. They began dropping a bunch of details, if not really all the details apart from the actual audio of Memento Mori. Now, this has created quite a bit of uh, stir, once again, on the home forum at Depeche-Mode.com. This is the the homepage, uh, the Halo forum, and this is where I spend the majority of my time when I'm looking for um, content from fans and commentary, that and on Twitter as well. So I'm going to share with you the track list here in just a moment. Now, at first blush, I actually... I think I saw the track list last night at some point. It's a little hazy as the Rose Bowl concert started when I was watching 101 last night. I I, I thought I I think I saw the 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 track list last night, but like a lot of people, I was kind of scratching my head because the it just didn't it didn't it didn't look real. It still doesn't really look that real looking at it, but that's Kind of par for the course when it comes to Depeche Mode. And so I'll share with you the track list here in just a moment. Well, they ended up sharing also um, photos of the album itself, the LP. And it looks, in my opinion, 100% legit. The Memento Mori Depeche Mode logo on the cover of the album, on the album sleeve, I mean, it's embossed. On the, uh, it has the image that we've all seen now of the floral, the two floral angel wings, which is the cover, and that was confirmed yesterday. Um, they also showed the backside of the album itself. Uh, it's a black and white. Definitely looks like Anton Corbin's work. Shows a uh, a chair, a tall, a uh, two tall chairs and a tall table with a skull sitting on top. As a matter of fact, uh, if you're if you're listening to the podcast right now. Um, I did a video for this particular episode, so if you want to go and see it for yourself, you can head on over to YouTube and find the My Nerd World uh, YouTube page, and you can watch the uh, the video there if you're listening to the audio portion of this. Um, but I'll go ahead and I'm going to bring it up here again. Yeah, so it has two different designed, two different types of chairs. One looks like more of a modern chair. Uh, and the other one looks like more of an older chair. The desk itself is very worn. Looks like a very old desk, and on top is a uh, is a skull. Also on the backside, you can see some of the uh, Columbia and Sony uh, and the copyright information on the far right, pr- uh, produced by James Ford. Uh, font looks similar uh, to what we've seen before, and then you have the um, the track listing. So the track listing. Uh, is as follows. Uh, My cosmos is mine, wagging tongue, ghosts again, don't say you love me, my favorite stranger, soul with me, Caroline's monkey, before we drown, people are good, always you, never let me go, and speak to me. Over on the Halo forum, there is quite a bit of debate going on. If this is a fake, it is an incredibly well-done fake. If it is a fake, my guess would be that 
This is actually the album cover. And if anything was photoshopped, it would have been the song titles. Now, be that as it may, I'm looking at it right now. I've seen a lot of photoshops in the past. Because this is the only thing on the on the actual album cover that I think you could potentially go and switch around and change. But in my view, this looks 100% legit. Now, again, on, on first you know, glance on first reading it, it sounds a little ridiculous, especially the relation of the songs themselves to previous Depeche Mode songs. Um, you know, I mean, Martin's uh, Martin's uh, use of, the, you know, the universe and cosmos. Uh, Don't say you love me is right out of. Um, oh, my gosh. And I'm completely drawing. A, it's no good. I don't know why I drew a blank right there. It's completely out of its, uh, you know, right out of it's no good. Uh, Caroline's monkey is rather interesting. And when you certainly when you think about Martin Gore and his, you know, recent solo uh, solo work. Uh, never let me go. Never let me down again. I mean, people are good. People are people. Now, that being said, when you look at other Depeche Mode tracks, they get kind of ridiculous. And if not as ridiculous as this. And just by example, I went ahead and I, I pulled up and I pulled up Exciter. Uh, if you were to present sort of Exciter's track listing on a first glance, you'd probably be like, what? You know, Dream On, Shine, Sweetest Condition. You kind of go, okay, we're doing that again. When the Body Speaks, The Dead of Night. Um, love Theme, Free Love, Comatose, I Feel Loved, Breathe, Easy, Tiger, I Am You, Good Night Lovers. I mean, how much love can we have on this album? Although, funnily enough, uh, Lover was actually one of the working titles for Exciter before they landed on Exciter. Uh, you know, and the same thing kind of rings true when you, look at, um, when you uh, look at Delta Machine. Welcome to my world, Angel, Heaven. Secret to the End, My Little Universe, uh, Slow, The Child Inside, Soft Touch, Raw Nerve, Should Be Higher. I, again, Depeche Mode has always had strangely titled songs. I, I'll give you that this is a little bit out of the norm. Um, my Cosmos is Mine, Wagging Tongue, but I'm absolutely clearly reserving judgment on all of this until the album comes out. I To go and judge a song based solely off the track title is utterly ridiculous in my opinion. So I am going to go with for the moment that this is 100% legit. I'm also going to go with it. This, this being a hundred percent legit. These are photographs of the album. It's going to get leaked. I'm actually a little bit surprised that it hasn't been leaked yet. Now things are a lot different than they were back in the heyday of leaking Depeche Mode. Uh, material when you had your lime wire and you had your your Napster um it's not quite as easy if uh, you know to say uh to go and put up audio for people to go grab without the uh you know the record label coming in i imagine it would probably land on reddit probably land it wouldn't land on youtube because it get yanked down unless they're alternately titling it but once the label got wind of it i i imagine that it would be taken down before anybody really had a chance to go and and grab much of it i mean again <clears throat> as i've mentioned before one of the reasons why i don't play depeche mode music on the show is because every time i do when i put it up on youtube i immediately get dinged for for copyright infringement no matter how short the snippet is like, I tried to earlier this week. I have an intro, and I used it on, I think, one of yesterday's shows. Uh, I think I used it on yesterday's show. I have a full intro that's got a bunch of songs put together. Uh, I produced it, you know, fully produced. Uh, and when I play that, I get I get dinged on YouTube. It's just not worth it, which is why I was considering going and moving this exclusively to the podcast. But because today we had some visuals as it relates to the album cover, um, I just I'm going to leave any Depeche Mode music off of the uh, off the show. And for those that don't know, the intro and outro music you hear is something that I created off of GarageBand, which is just my little riff on on useless. Uh, it's, you know, not nowhere near the quality, obviously. So uh, let's back up here just a moment. Um, song titles aside, I think it's going to leak. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if there wasn't something out there within the next day or so. You know, um, also, I love the artwork. I'll just say it up front. Uh, this is some of the best art I think uh, that the um, that the band has had that uh, Anton Corbin has come up with uh, in a long, long time. 
Uh, if I had my druthers, I probably would have the Depeche Mode logo and, Mento, and Memento Mori not be reversed the way that it is. I understand why they did. But I love the way the DM looks um, on the logo itself. And I'm glad that we have... Um, that we have some actual images on the cover uh, this time. I just think it looks I think it looks beautiful. Um, I didn't have a problem with Spirit. I like the cohesiveness of Spirit, but I also like the cohesiveness of the artwork as it relates to every single album. I think it's one of the band's strong suits in using Anton Corbin. As I mentioned on a yesterday's show, the what we had the uh, listener that reached out who has a friend that was the photographer for the singles collection. Um, I love that as well. I always appreciate the fact that the band really, for every release, there is um, a cohesiveness to all the artwork together. And this all very much seems to fit with what we believe the theming of the album is, especially based off of the, uh, the title alone. So, what do you think? Again, I want to hear from you. I've been getting a lot of feedback, and I really, really do appreciate it. I'll be uh, sharing some of that feedback coming up here here in a moment. I'm going to save uh, a few of the emails that I've received until the show uh, later in the uh, later next week. I want to uh, share with you some of the feedback that I got with <laughs> with regard to the countdown leading to the countdown. So we can kind of move on past that and move forward towards uh, towards Thursday. But what do you think about the track list? What do you think about the uh, artwork? Uh, talkshownerd at gmail.com. Uh, you can email me at talkshownerd at gmail.com. And, of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, leave a comment and be sure to like and subscribe. And subscribe to the podcast on whatever platform you are uh, you're using um my guess is by the way i'm just gonna take a stab at this uh i'm thinking caroline's monkey is probably an instrumental uh i know we're gonna get a couple of dave tracks on this uh i believe that speak to me somebody had already confirmed i think that speak to me was a a dave penned track so that's the one that's going to be uh, closing uh, closing the album and the my cosmos is mine sounds very much like something martin gore would do uh, and Ghosts Again, I know, I don't think we've we've uh, determined whether or not that's a Martin or Dave track. Uh, my guess is it's a Dave track, and I mentioned that earlier in the week, just based off of the little the little bit of lyrics that we've uh, we've received. So the controversy, though, and the debate around the track listing, uh, and also the frustration over the, in my opinion, botched. Um, uh, you know, a botched announcement yesterday has been a really, really interesting read uh, as well. So with that, uh, again, talkshownerd at gmail.com. Want to know what you think. Go ahead and get to some of that, uh, to some of that listener feedback. All right. Uh, first, we hear from a friend of the show, Stephanie. Says, hi, John. Now I need a hug. It's a real shame that we loyal fans are kept waiting like this and causing confusion. I'm sure Dave and Martin can't help it, but the organization is just bad, and maybe they should think about rolling a few heads. Nonetheless, I'm now looking forward to next Thursday, and hopefully we will all be redeemed then. Have an exciting week until then, and I hope you're in good health. Many greetings from Germany, Stephanie. Uh, yeah, I know I'm doing great, and uh, thank you as always, Stephanie. And I find it, I, I, I'm with those individuals who have been criticizing the marketing aspect um, because it has not been good. And what I think is really interesting is is that there is some consistency here. We had the Berlin press conference which would have been fine had the interview with the band in the official press conference been good. It was awful. I know this, this was a friend of the band that did the interview, but um, it just it wasn't good. It wasn't insightful. Uh, it wasn't until afterwards the interviews that the band did with the press were fantastic. So it, it was like it was like the secondary aspect of it was much, much better than what the band officially did. And then this time around, we have this horrible promotion, in my opinion, of the countdown to an announcement to an announcement. And then the day after, we get this feeding frenzy of info from uh, at Depeche Mode underscore SK. I mean, this is what they should have done in the announcement. Like, I wouldn't have cared nearly as much 
that we didn't get to hear any new music on Friday, specifically the single, if they had released the official, well, they released the album cover, but given us the back cover and the track listing. I would have been, I'm like, all right, cool. We didn't get any music, but at least we we got something. So again, we had this horrible promotion, and then it's the the fans and the media to a you know a certain extent who are the ones that deliver the interesting information, and we're getting it secondary now. I, I just I, I I don't. And typically, I'm not a big marketing guy. I mean, I work in radio, but I'm not I'm not a big marketing guy. But I understand how marketing works, and a lot of times I'll kind of give the benefit of the doubt that. Well, certain things appeal to the hardcore fans that are going to buy the album no matter what, and they also need to get the information out to the casual fans to let them know that there's Depeche, you know, music coming out. Um, but this time around, the the lack of really taking advantage of the hype around The Last of Us and Never Let Me Down Again, and now this here, I, I just... They know the the fans are going to buy the music and they're going to go see the concert. So I suppose they're okay with frustrating us hardcore fans. But um, why make a bad experience at all? Just do it right. Bong13 writes, thanks for sharing your frustrations, which I know we all have. I also have been building up to this point in the same way, catching up with old albums. Today was Black Celebration as this was my first concert. It's been an emotional roller coaster. Roll on February 9th. Good job, and have we have uh, lots of uh, faith and devotion. Thank you, Bong13. Uh, Jay Hill 405 says, I'm so happy and excited for Cedric and France, who I mentioned on yesterday's show. We'll get to uh, see the band perform on the uh, on the show there, I believe, I guess, next week, the week after next. Uh, great way to end the show. Uh, I'm not as frustrated and depressed as everyone else today, because even though we have another six-day wait, we are still getting new music from DM. That in itself is a gift in this life. Yes, it is. I really enjoyed your show and the connection with other fans you described throughout. I just happened upon this while doing a YouTube search for DM info and news for the release of the new single yeah and this is a, and thank you jay hill 405 i appreciate it and this is another reason why i'm going to continue putting the show up on uh, up on youtube because i just realized that there's um it's a lot more exposure uh, for for fans that are looking for some depeche mode content beyond official releases um all right this comes from spay uh, the most irritating part is it's coming from the worldwide pop band that everyone likes because they're different and British, so like everyone will know of this bad public relations setup. Yeah, I mean, I think the good news is we'll all move on pretty quickly. When I woke up this morning and I saw the album sleeve and saw the um, you know the the track titles, I was like, all right, we've got more, we've got more information uh, that we can uh, <laughs> that we can go and chew on now. I'll I'll be able to wait. Um, BR, uh, Brifts, BRFTS 2001 wrote, this soured my interest when the song actually comes out next week. I, uh, as I prepared all morning and had my headphones on next Friday, I'm going to blow it off and listen to it when I feel like it. We'll see if you keep to that. <laughs> Nobody would begrudge you if you listened to it the moment it was released. Just saying. Uh, Anthony Bedina writes, very disappointed. I've been following DM since 1987. They need to get a new uh, PR team from the lackluster press conference announcing the tour. Now this. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, friend of the show, Michael E. Uh, Tennant, who I uh, would suggest checking out his uh, Twitter page and his YouTube channel. Uh, Michael E. Tennant E. Uh, excuse me. E. T. E. N. N. A. N. T. T. E. N. N. A. N. T. He makes um, some really great electronic music i would encourage you to go and uh, check it out he writes at this point i don't understand why they don't release the damn thing yeah that was my thought too as a matter of fact i haven't even looked today just on a on a whim i know a lot of people were frustrated just about giving up so much personal information to to sony um and then not having that's that, that's the part of it that really i understand they never announced that we were getting a single but why bother with the sign up for the audio when it's going to be released if you're not going to yeah i know again they probably needed the lead time or there was something that happened and they changed course midway through 
I'm just I'm going to uh, iTunes and Depeche Mode, and now there's nothing new there. Playing the Angel of 12-inch singles is the only thing that's there. Uh, thank you, Michael, as always. David uh, Watwood writes, Last time I was disappointed is when I tried to meet Depeche Mode in 1990 during the Violator release day at the CD warehouse in Hollywood for an autograph, and it ended up in a little riot on the local news. Called it. Um, yeah, it was funny. I was thinking yesterday, you know, I, I can't remember the last time the fans were this upset, and maybe that particular instance which was uh, chronicled in detailed uh, in detail on the um, remastered uh, special editions of uh, of Violator. Side story to that: I lived oh I don't know twenty minutes away from that warehouse records in Hollywood at the time, and um, you know obviously was way into the band anytime they came to town. Uh, I had FOMO in the worst possible way, fear of missing out. So I would, you know, go to every single possible show within driving distance as I could, which is part of the reason I've been able to see them 33 times live. Uh, that being said, I had to, I never forget, I had to work that night. I was working for, I believe I was working for another record store. I think I was working for Music Plus at the time. And uh, there was no way I could get out of work. And it just it just gutted me. It gutted me that I couldn't go. Uh, I had a buddy of mine, Mike Martin, who went. I don't think he made it inside. I need to reach out to him. He kind of uh, um, fell out. Of, he didn't fall out of favor, but just wasn't nearly as into the band as I was after um, after Violator came out. He was more of a fan of their earlier work um, and, and lost interest when um, by the time that Songs of Faith and Devotion came out. Uh, but I'm... Uh, yeah, I, mean, yeah, I know he went, but I don't think he made it in. But I remember that just killed me. When the riot, when I found out that the riot took place, it made me feel a little bit better because I figured, okay, well, I probably wouldn't have gotten in, but still, oh, that was brutal. All right, uh, just a few more here. Lars uh, Guthel writes, this marketing disaster would qualify for study books on how to ruin every campaign and piss off your customers, especially considering the expectation of fans around the globe uh, that had been obvious on all channels. Those responsible would have needed to see what they were heading in. Uh, I have never seen the fans of DM so upset and disappointed in this right now after the very unprofessional press event. In Berlin some weeks ago, I don't know who's responsible for DM's campaign, but these people don't seem to possess much of talent or understanding for DM's fans. Yeah, and I, I think that's probably part of it. Uh, you know, I just I wonder who who is in the marketing team. And I know years ago we had you know hardcore fans of the band that actually had become. I know Brat's still a part of the group. Um, one of the uh, one of the individuals from 101, I know uh, one of the ladies ended up becoming a part of the group for some years, and my apologies for not having the name right off the top of my head. Uh, but yeah, I'd be curious to know who's in the marketing depart uh, department making these uh, making these decisions. Um, all right, last one. Uh, and again, we have a, a lot more to share, but I'll do that on next week's show. So if you didn't he hear comment or email, I'm just I'm hanging on to it um, until next week. Tokyo Skyline writes, okay, I was guilty of assuming that we would get to hear a new single today with either a lyric video or proper video when it was never when it was never said this was going to happen. Um, but the but mail shot with lyrics for what appears to be from Ghosts Again in a video short on YouTube with every track playing was very misleading. Yeah, was very misleading. And too suggestive. If they removed the lyrics, and I forgot about that. They actually had, you know, some of the lyrics on there. From the email and the countdown and the short video and the backing track and replaced it with something along the lines of all will be revealed soon, then that may have helped manage expectations. Personally, on web countdown and video each day, I would have had a piece of the artwork come and go. And on zero, reveal the full image and dates. I think the frustration was the countdown via the email hit zero and nothing happened. If it had revealed the album cover. Uh, if that's what it is, as obviously not wise to make assumptions after today. And then mention the debut date for the single. Or a link to a new page on the band's website revealing the artwork and news. Fine, but nothing. Instead, I had to go hunting. I had to go web hunting for the uh, for the relevance of the countdown, and then there was nothing on the band's official website regarding any of this new info. Then he came uh, Tokyo uh, Tokyo Skyline. Then uh, wrote back a second time a little bit later on and said, "I needed to vent earlier, but now I listen to the podcast. Um, love the new artwork, one of the best, along with the singles, music for the masses, Black Celebration, and Violator. Aesthetic reminds me of Billie Eilish when we fall asleep." 
uh, which is a great album cover and album should make for some great merchandise. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, it's funny because I was when I was looking over my um, my Sounds of the Universe uh, box set last night, I remember thinking to myself that I didn't buy a tour T-shirt just because I didn't care for the artwork. I mean, it was OK. Uh, and I liked how everything looked, you know, everything was all themed. Uh, I just didn't care for the for the stick artwork that uh, Antona put together that time. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. A black solo. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm in UK. Here we go. I've got a backup here. Uh, should make for some great merchandise. I'm UK based, and the first DM gig was a black celebration at NEC Birmingham, which many of the live tracks appeared on future records. So I can claim to have appeared and sung on several DM records. That's cool. I can do that for one on one. I had to plead and bargain to finish work early today to catch the big reveal and countdown and say no more, and I will be traveling back from London when the song drops next Thursday. I just hope there's some exciting promo posters around town that day to compensate. Uh, tradition for an album release day. Day off of work, visit the record sco- a store, fingers in ears if playing over the store speakers. I don't want to hear it until um, I'm home in its entirety. I won't even listen to dodgy leaks on YouTube before release day. It's like opening presents before Christmas Day and being disappointed when the big day comes. Uh, Buy the new album, go home, pop the hi-fi and kettle on, play the album, kick back with coffee, um, and uh, listen while reading lyrics. Repeat play for the rest of the day. Uh, Electronic Beats concert in evening and uh, plenty of stout. Love songs of faith and devotion, some of Martin's strongest lyric work. Um, Walking in my shoes, get right with me. Uh, Two of my all-time favorites, mine as well, and Condemnation. Love the podcast. Uh, thank you for that. I really do appreciate it. All right. So that wraps things up for today. I, I look forward to, uh, to, uh, hearing from you talk show nerd at, uh, gmail.com uh, as we do this all again. <laughs> and, uh, just would love to hear your thoughts on the album cover, the track listing. And just before I wrap up, let me do one more quick look. I'm going to pop over to the Depeche-Mode.com Halo forum to make sure that nothing of significance has happened. Um, Let's see. Uh, Okay, LOL, can't wait to hear Monkey Funeral. (laughs) So... Yeah, the debate over on the forum really is. I look, it could be fake. Like I said, that's probably the only thing on the back of this album cover uh, that could have been photoshopped to look look legit. But the um, if you can't see it, the the actual image is it's a photo, so it's taken at an angle, and the the angle of the of the um, track listing on the back. I mean, it's just it's it's real. If it's if it's not real, then I will clearly come back on the show and uh, and say, hey, look, I was wrong. At this point in time, though, I'm saying it's real. All right, if you want to support My Nerd World and the Depeche Mode podcast, head on over to MyNerdWorld.net. If you like science fiction, check out my Embark Science Fiction Space Opera series. Details are available right there on the homepage. You can go to Amazon.com, search for John J-O-N Justice, and Embark, and check that out. Until then, I hope you have a, a fantastic week, and as always, wherever you are, you are happy, you are healthy, and you are safe. Bye.